Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Brian the Floridian, coming to you from Cross Creek, Florida. And right now, I am ready to go walk into the Marjorie Rawlings Historic Homestead, which is behind me. So if you don't know what who Marjorie Rawlings is, or actually Marjorie Kenyon Rawlings, she was a famous American writer who wrote about Florida royal living and settings in a lot of her novels. Uh, she was actually born in August 8, 1896 in, in Washington, D.C., and she passed away December 14th of 1953 in St. Augustine, but she spent a majority of her life back here, I believe right back here in this homestead, which is in Cross Creek, Florida, right in the middle of Florida, right in the middle of nowhere, really. So Marjorie Keenan Rawlings' best work was the book called The Yearling, which I remember I read, I read that book when I was a in elementary school, I think I met or middle school. I remember reading that for for reading assignments back in school. But that was one of the books I used to read. Um, I read, I know, but that was a long time ago. But it was her best known work, and it was about a boy who adopts an orphan fawn. If you don't know what a fawn is, it's a, it's a deer, baby deer. But anyway, wait, anyway, anyway, that book was based on royal royal Florida in this type of setting back here in Cross Creek. And she actually won a Pulitzer Prize for that book in 1939. So, pretty cool that a famous American writer lives right here in Florida, right here in Cross Creek. So, about to take a look at her homestead. I believe this is actually owned by the state of Florida, so it's now a state park and state landmark. It's on a national historic list of places in the country back here. Let's go take a look, guys. Let's go follow me, and I'm going to show you what I see back here. And hopefully I can do a tour of the inside of the house, but I'm not sure if I can. I'll see if I can. Hopefully they are allowing tours. And I will see you guys back here. You guys follow me. So to get to the homestead, you have to park in this in this county park, I believe, which is has a boat ramp. It's right on part of Cross Creek, but you park in this parking lot and you come over here. You kind of walk from the park right to the homestead, and here's a little information board about uh, Marjorie Keenan Rollins' state historical site. It shows you a little map about. Where you're at, you know, where you're at, and how much the tours are, how much it costs to get in, and there's different trails here you can also walk on, and there's also a picture of her right there at her favorite writing table, right in Cross Creek. So Cross Creek belongs to the wind and the rain, and to the sun and the seasons, to the cosmic secrecy of seed and beyond all to time. Marjorie Keenan Rawlings, Cross Creek, 1941. And that was another famous book that she wrote. And here's a picture of her with her pointer Mo in the big scrub. Okay, you got to stay. <laughs> but you actually have to pay to get in right here. And it goes by an honor system. So you put your money into an envelope and you put it right into the mailbox right here. So it's only $3 to get into the homestead and I have my three dollars right here got to put it right in this envelope and you gotta put this on your car I believe so I got this little pamphlet from this little information board here and talks about the actual homestead that's a picture of her on the on the very cover right there and pretty pretty cool little map inside there also this inside of the house is actually inside this little map as well as different places to see on the property right here and there's an actual map of the of our property another type of map too with the with the barn 
a little bit of information there. But anyway, guys, I'm going to walk through right here. This is how you get through here, and the hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So let's take a walk through right through this little pathway here. One of the signs you see is right here coming into the past the gate. Probably one of the quotes for one of her books. I believe it's from her book Cross Creek, which she wrote in 1942. All right, so walking through the trail, this is how do we, how do we get to her homestead after you pay. Looks like there's some orange grove trees right here on the left. And from what I've read, they kept it the same condition as when she lived back here in, I believe, the 1930s or 40s. There's actual livestock on the grounds. Chickens here. There's some chickens right there underneath this tree. Just hanging out. Every animal I've seen lately in Florida has been in the shade because it's been so hot in Florida. It's been so humid. It's like a rainforest here in Florida. Alright, so coming up on the barn, I believe. It's a nice piece of property here. And it's right off the uh, main road right there. I think it was County Road 325 it's off of. And there's a rooster right there. Looks like some chicken coops of right over yonder. So they have guided tours available different times of day. 10 o'clock, 11, 11 a.m., 1, 2, and 3 p.m. There's a sign-in book right here, I believe, for the tours. So I signed a book right here. Brian the Floridian. <laughs> And what's cool is they offer bug spray right next to the sign-in of the books right here. And also a little book about the place, about the Marjorie Keen Rawlings house. A little bit of her history. And they made a movie about that book, The Yearling. I think they made several movies about that. But definitely a very, very famous book. And I would recommend reading it if you haven't read it yet. A little bit, a little bit different type of book to read since it's like in the Deep South type uh, wording or verbiage. But this is actually the old barn right here. This is where like a lot of the activity happened on the farm. Her orange rose back there. When they would pick the oranges, they would actually bring them in here, put them in crates in the wagon, take them to the uh, packing houses. So this barn will actually house also uh, milk cows, looks like a mule, and some other livestock. Looks like maybe chickens too or would hang around here too. And here's some old farm equipment. I believe that's one of the boats that she would have used right here. It looks like it's seen better days. So that lake over there is actually called Orange Lake. And this is the type of boat that she would have used. This isn't her boat, but actually a recreation of the boat she would use. It's like some ducks. Some chickens there. So here's the back of the barn. Looks like a wagon. Probably for delivering the packed oranges, I, I would assume. Maybe an orange squeezer right there. Some horse tack.
So this motor was seen in the film Cross Creek. 1941 Johnson AT10, five horsepower motor. It's like this guy's having a little drink right here. I didn't blame you, it's hot. Drink up. You need to get hydrated out here. All right, this is it. another part of the barn. Looks like a workshop. I would assume that there was some, maybe some tack, some saws in here. So everything is pretty much original, I, or close to original as as she would have left it. And there's the actual house where she lived in. So there's the front gate where you would come in from uh, County Road 325. And here's the actual house. This is actually called a Florida Cracker style house. And reading on the pamphlet, the oldest part of this house was built in 1884. So definitely been here for a while. But typical Florida Cracker houses, you see like a nice big porch looks like an addition is right here and what's interesting is the the shingles are made out of wood as you see right there wooden porches and wooden shingles So this is right off the uh, entrance the, of the front gate here. Maybe a little sundial. Very quiet out here. A little bird bath. Lots of chickens here. So. This is a Oldsmobile 1940 year car. I'm not sure if this is her actual car, but I would assume it would be her car. A little bit of rust right there. It looks like it's been, it's seen better times, but relatively still in halfway decent shape. So right behind the car is this tree with these little, I'm not sure what these are. They look like apples, but I know they're not apples. Leave me a comment below if you know what these are, but there's quite a few of them on this tree right on the side of the house. So come to find out, this car is not actually her car, but this is a recreation of what she would have drove. Same color, same make and model, same year. And this is what they had it brought here to kind of give it the illusion that she still lives here. But another porch right there. I, be I believe behind that is the dining room. There's a chimney right up there. So I'm assuming then that's where they would cook some meals in there. Looks like where they get the water for the maybe a well provide water to the uh, house. It's like a little work barn here. <laughs> There's like a chicken right there too. Just ch chilling out. Just in there chilling out, aren't you? Staying out of the shade? I don't blame you. It's really hot. I think I, think I, I, think I surprised you, didn't I? <laughs> Got 
Got some wood over there that I imagine for the fireplace inside to keep everything warm. A dinner bell. And a clothesline. So definitely no washers or dryers. Like, like the modern times back in the day, they, just, they would have to wash their clothes by hand and hang them up here on the clothesline. Get dried the natural old fashioned way. Here's the back side of the house. And I believe that's it's the dining room right there. And here's another part of the house. That's the other part that was addition, I believe, was put on the main house that faces toward the road. And back here is the actual outhouse. I believe the house does have a bathroom, but this is the another outhouse. What probably they, they would have used before the addition of the bathrooms. So you can sit right there with a newspaper and just hang out for a while and do your duty. Or make your deposit. Looks like some butterflies around the property. And this is the back porch. Coming down the back porch. Looks like another bedroom right, right over here. So I'm thinking this was probably built onto the main house. A couple of spare bedrooms for maybe for guests or people staying here. Or maybe even her bedroom. I'm not really sure, but There's a little hat right there. So I was reading that this is actually her bedroom on the end of the house. That's where she would have slept at right here in this bed. There's her suitcase and her shoes. And there's a picture of her when she was younger, I imagine. Little closet with her clothes in there. So definitely you can tell this is 1930s, 40s era clothing. And a portable typewriter which she would have wrote her novels on. Like I was talking about earlier. And he's got a bug on my on my foot trying to bite me. Maybe a biting fly, but I'm not sure if that's her as a baby or a young toddler. Some of her jewelry. And this is her dressing table. Just like the way she would have left it. And I believe that picture is her second husband, Norm, Norman Baskin. And this is the bathroom where she would have done everything to get ready for the day. And they had oil lamps at one time, but then they got electricity. As, as you can tell up there. old-fashioned bathtub sink air the toilet so I imagine they first got the outhouse and then they got the plumbing later on for the inside of the bathrooms so there's a dress one of her dresses on the bed and consequently she got her last name Rawlings from her first husband which was Charles Rawlings who she met while she was in college at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. 
and she met him while she was writing for the school magazine. And they married and they moved to Louisville, Kentucky. And after that, I believe her mother passed away and she used the inheritance to buy this property, which was 72 acres at the time. So she divorced her husband in 1933 after I guess living in this area in rural Florida did not appeal to him. I guess he hated it so much he divorced her. But they were married in 1919. So married for 14 years was their first marriage. And then she married just gentleman, Norman Baskins for a second marriage. And come to find out he was a hoteler from Ocala. And they got married in 1941. And he actually remodeled an old mansion in St. Augustine called the Castle Warden Hotel, which is now the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum there. And she married him, I believe, until her death. But anyway, she was, he, him, Norman Baskins and Marjorie Rollins purchased a house, a little cottage in Crescent Beach. And that's where they lived half the time was there and half the time, I believe, here. And unfortunately, she got sick in Crescent Beach at her cottage and ended up passing away in St. Augustine, which was the nearest hospital to Crescent Beach. So right across from her bedroom is the actual garden where she grew all her vegetables and fruit that would sustain her while she lived here. Looks like a large variety of stuff here. I can see cabbage back there. Mint. I think I see a tomato plant over there too. But watermelons right there. So everything that she would eat for fresh vegetables and, and fruit would come right from this garden besides the orange trees around the corner. It's like a piece of squash right over on the ground. Lots of butterflies. So these are the chicken and duck houses back here by behind the garden. Even though they're loose, loose on the property, this is where they would stay at most of the time. Lots of orange trees here, or citrus trees. But it looks like she kept the orange grove intact. Lots of orange trees around this property. And coming back here is the tenant house where all the workers that she hired would, would live in exchange for working on her property. She would give them a small salary and actually give them a place to live right here on this in this house. There's a front porch. And I believe I believe I'm allowed to walk inside, so let's take a look inside. Looks like a little dining room table here with some food ready to be eaten or consumed. Little quarters for sleeping. Interesting looking bedspread. I haven't seen that before. And the pillow's the same way too. But there's actually windows on the on the openings here. And it looks like it's not finished. No insulation, just bare wood. So I imagine probably to keep it cool, but I could be wrong. I imagine this would be cold in the winter time because there's no insulation. And I believe this is a kitchen. It's actually cool right here.
another area here it looks like another part of the house maybe another bedroom or living quarters got some oatmeal there some bread sweet potato a little stove to keep warm in this little side of the house And there's a picture. Um, I believe that maybe, maybe he would have lived here. I believe her maid, one of her workers. So come to find out, she had a maid by the name of Idelia, who was an African American. She treated, from reading about her history, she treated her workers with respect and also treated them pretty well. And she wrote a book, even wrote a book about her maid, Idelia called the, the perfect maid and I believe that her maid actually helped her write the book or gave her some contributions about what to write in the book but nevertheless that's probably a picture of her right there so coming back to this kitchen I see these old school looking uh, cans Van Kemp's pork and beans sauerkraut Stokely's finest so pretty cool they have this stuff here and it is nice and cool in this part of the house. Let's go and take a look out the back door. Nothing really out there. So I got some clothes hanging right there, an old washboard. Looks like a clothes washer right in front of me here. So pretty quiet out here. And I believe this house was built later because of the tin roof on top. So the house and the farmland is has been designated as a National Historic Landmark. As said on the plaque in 2006 it has it sits up off the ground and it has porches on every side around the house um, it has high ceilings to let the hot air rise if you're looking for any way to catch a breeze that is Marjorie's not her original car it's a 1940s Oldsmobile it's a replica of the one she had and Marjorie was a pedal to the metal kind of gas so she enlarged the porch Eventually she got screened when she had a little bit of money to put into the house. She put the French doors on to open the, this room, the inside room, up to the porch and have more light and more air coming in. Okay, come on. Like she liked her liquor right over there. Oldest part of the house. You're going to see that then the um, the houses were joined together when she after she got here. Um, so the the back part of the house was joined by a porch, and the second part of the house was joined by a bathroom. They've see. been um, they've been translated into at least 33 languages now that right we know there. of. Really? And that's why I say she was world famous, and that's when Zelma Kaysen didn't want the world to know that she was profane. Well, and then uh, the, the middle shelf are her books in chronological order. And these little books here were made uh, by the American Field Service during World War II. They mailed those to soldiers and sailors to keep in their pockets to have a little piece of home with them during the war. And three of her books were chosen by the Field Service, South Green Under and Cross Creek and... Um, the yearling were chosen to be books that were sent overseas and as a result of that she wrote one chapter in Cross Creek called Our Daily Bread where she wrote about all the great cooking and all the food that she had out here and she got hundreds and hundreds of letters from soldiers saying you're making me so homesick <laughs> and this is what I'm fighting for lady 
and one mm -hmm. of their commanding officers wrote a letter and said, I'm not going to let them have these books anymore. You're destroying morale. They don't want to go to the mess hall after they read about your good food. Mm -hmm. But as a result of that, she ended up writing her cookbook, Cross Creek Cookery, a year later. I've not read that one. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's Eh, Cross Creek and Cross Creek Cookie are my favorites of all of her books. Just that uh, came out after her death. It's called. It's a children's book. It's called The Secret Garden, and it's beautifully illustrated. Isn't it pretty? And it's about this little girl named. Oh, she wrote all that. Oh, well, this is Japanese version, Chinese version. Oh, here's Spanish. So the pictures of her when she lived in Florida here. So many people stayed in this bedroom, including all the people whose books are up here. You can see Hemingway's book is up there, because I told you some, of, some people say, yes, he stayed here. So I think we would ever want to believe about that. And Marjorie would have loved if that had happened. So uh, Gregory Peck, um, who played Penny Baxter in the movie, spent the night here. Uh, she had a big party for the entire cast of the Yearling, at the wrap-up of the Yearling. And we know he could not have fit in that bed, because he's so sick. And this is a closet. To go out to the next room, you had to walk around. You, had to go outside. And you can see she was quite thin. She didn't stay that thin. Uh, Marjorie ate her own good, really rich cooking. And in her letters and in her books, she talks about always trying to lose weight. Marjorie no. was always trying to take <laughs> off another 10 pounds. No. Not successfully. <laughs> so Marjorie loved to entertain and she would invite company out uh, she had friends at the University of Florida that would come out and have dinner with her here. Um, she did a lot of the cooking herself, but she also taught her maids how to cook in the style that she liked. And she was very proud of her cooking. Vogue magazine came and did an article on Marjorie, and this is what she said about her cooking. She said, writing is my profession, my evaluation, and my torture. But I cook as an extrovert, singing at the top of my lungs in ecstasy and the certainty of fulfillment. She also said, you can criticize my writing, but don't criticize my garden out back. And if you come back again in the winter, we still cook on the wood stove here. And if you come on a day we're cooking, you might get a taste of something. We cook vegetables from her garden and make some of her recipes from her cookbook, Cross Creek Cookery. Um, she did later get a gas stove, but she cooked on the wood stove for many years. Have you ever seen a wood stove? Okay, this is what happens here. You put the wood in this little box here. This opens up, and the wood goes in there, the ashes fall down into the ashes box. And they say there's three speeds, high, medium, and low, depending on how far away from the fire you are. And if you baked in this little oven, if you put something in, halfway through, you would have to turn it all the way around so it got back to the hot side. So otherwise, you'd have something that she, aluminum got invented, and she didn't like it. She said, you give that to the war effort. I, don't, I want my cast iron. And now cast iron has become a very popular. We're looking at the broom. So she loved yes, cast she iron. The lady was telling, telling us that she preferred cooking but with I this kind of yes, cookware. Even though they invented aluminum at the time, she would stick with this. The wood burning stove right there. All these chickens are eating this fruit right here on this tree. Pretty smart. And there's a resident cat right over here. Just laying over here, just chilling out by her replica of her old car. So on the way out of the tour, I stopped at a little gift shop they had there, 
and bought this book by Marjorie Keenan Rawlings, her cookbook called Cross Creek Cookery. Can't wait to try out these recipes. All right, guys, just did the house tour of her residence back here, Marjorie Keenan Rawlings' house. I learned a lot about her history, her book writing, her, her living situation back here, her renovations, her life. I would highly recommend that tour if you guys are ever visiting this park, this homestead. Definitely check out the tour. I learned a lot about her, her, her life of Marjorie Keenan Rawlings. Also about her husband's, um, Charles Rawlings, when he came down here. They were married for 14 years until he got divorced. They got divorced. He got tired of living in this type of environment. And he was a writer too. And I also learned about her husband, uh, Norman Baskins, that, that she married. And I believe they were married the longest. And he never married again after, after she passed away. I learned that, all that stuff back in that tour. And definitely worth checking out. And But definitely, guys, if you're ever in Cross Creek, Florida, or near Hawthorne, Florida, or Mekinope, definitely check this place out. This is a national landmark of a literary genius. And just couldn't say I enjoyed visiting this place. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for following me on my little journey and stopping at this little place of Marjorie Keenan Rawlings, her historic homestead here, and her farm. And I will do more videos do more little jaunts around florida if you like this move video hit like like you can subscribe please subscribe and i will do more things like this i enjoy doing these little tours stopping in, in unique places in florida unusual places and guys i will see you guys later you guys stay safe take care